Welcome back to our learning course. In this lesson, we will look at how animals can learn simultaneously about many stimuli. For example, we could do a Pavlovian conditioning experiment where we turn on a light at the same time that we play a sound, and then give food to the animal. How can we understand learning in this experiment or in any other experiment with more than one stimulus? We have already seen how animals can learn about one stimulus in our lessons on the Roscoe Wagner model, or RW for short. In the first of those lessons, I also mentioned that RW is famous in part because it can explain learning in complex situations. And in this lesson, we will see how. We will do so by looking at how RW explains three phenomena that we have seen in previous lessons, overshadowing, blocking, and conditioned inhibition. Please review those lessons if needed. RW can work with any number of stimuli, but to keep things simple here, we will have just two stimuli. Please make sure you understand how RW works with one stimulus before going on. RW assumes that the change in behavior that we see in Pavlovian conditioning depends on changes in the association between CS and US, in red in the figure. When we have two stimuli, we have to consider two associative strengths. For example, if Pavlov's turns on a light and sounds a bell before giving meat to his dogs, we expect both the light and the bell to become associated with the meat. The question is how the brain decides how much associative strength to give to each stimulus. In RW, the basic idea is always the same. Learning about the two stimuli is proportional to the error that the animal perceives, and the task of learning is to get rid of this error. For this idea to work with two stimuli, we just have to update our definition of the error. If you remember, the error is the difference between what you should do and what you really do. In our first lesson on RW, we called this the wise and the weird. So we will start with what the animal does when there are two stimuli instead of one. RW makes this really simple for us. When two stimuli are there, their associative strengths sum. For example, if the dog salivates one drop to the light and two drops to the bell, RW assumes that it will salivate three drops when both the light and the bell are there. Things are not always this simple, but this is a topic that we won't cover in this lesson. The reason why we use this assumption is that it makes it very easy to write the error for two stimuli. So our assumption is that when you have A and B together, here written AB, their associative strength sum. So the associative strength of A and B together is the associative strength of A plus that of B. This means, in turn, that the error lambda minus VAB will be lambda minus VA plus VB. That's it. Now we just have to plug in the error in the RW learning equation, and we know how to update VA and VB. And here it is, delta VA and delta VB. They look exactly the same. They use the same error. The only difference is that the alpha value might be different for the two stimuli. I have indicated this by writing alpha A in the formula for delta A and alpha B in the formula for delta B. If this sounds a bit confusing, don't worry, we'll go through a few examples now. Let's start from overshadowing. This is just about the simplest experiment you can have with two stimuli. The two stimuli are just always shown together. We saw in our lesson on overshadowing that even if this is true, the two stimuli are always reinforced in the same way, often animals learn more about one than the other. RW's explanation of this fact is that the two stimuli have different learning speeds. Let's see how this works. The whole model is in these three equations, and for this example, I will use a value of 100 for lambda, a value of 1 for beta, just to make things simple, and then I will use a value 0.1 for alpha A, and 0.2 for alpha b. We know from our previous lesson on learning speed that this means that learning about b will be twice as fast as learning about a. Let's see why this ends up causing overshadowing. When the experiment starts, v a and v b are both zero, and this means that the error is 100 for both stimuli. So the update to v a is 0.1 times 100, which is 10, and the update to VB is 0.2 times 100, which is 20. So after the first experience, we have VA equal 10 and VB equal 20. Now, the value of the error is 70, because it's 100 minus 10 minus 20. And remember that both stimuli are seeing the same error. So the next update will be 0.1 times 70 for A, and this is 7, and 0.2 times 70 for b, and this is 14. 
After this update, the two values will be 17 for A and 34 for B. This also means that the error now is only 49, that is 100 minus 17 minus 34. If you calculate the next step in the same way, you will see that VA goes further up to 21.9 and VB to 43.8. We can see that because the learning rate for B is twice the learning rate for A, we also get that VB is always twice VA. If we continue with many updates, we see that the error is gradually eaten up, so to speak, and after enough updates, very little error remains. For example, after 15 updates, we get that VA is up to 33.2 and VB is up to 66.4, so that the error at this point is only 0.4, and remember that we started with 100. What I want to point out at this point is that when learning stops, because the error is zero or almost zero, the associated strength of B will be twice that of A. You don't see this right away as you do the experiment because A and B are always presented together, but in the model we can see that B acquires associative strength faster than A. In an experiment, to see this you would test A and B separately after learning is completed. In conclusion, what you get from RW extended to two stimuli is exactly what you see in an overshadowing experiment, that a stimulus can get more associative strength than another. In summary, RW explains overshadowing with the idea that the two stimuli are working together to reduce the same error, but one stimulus has a higher learning rate than the other, so its own associative strength increases faster. Now, as always with RW, it gets boring to do all calculations, and that's why we use computers to do them for us. But RW is simple enough that we can also see where learning is going with just a few tricks. Let's see how this works for overshadowing. The first thing to remember is that RW is an error-correcting model. If it can learn something, it will learn it. So we know that the error in the end will be zero, and that means that VA plus VB will be 100. That is summarized as 0.1 or up there. We also know another thing, that each update to VB is twice the update to VA. As I observed in the previous slide, this means that in the end, VB will be twice VA. By putting together these two facts, we realize that three times VA will be 100, meaning that VA in turn will be 33 plus one third, or if you prefer, 33.3333 and so on. At this point, we can also calculate VB, because we know that it's 100 minus VA. This turns out to be 66 and two-thirds, or 66.666, and so on. We're done. We didn't have to follow the associative strength through many updates. With RW, we can just figure out what associative strength will be learned in just a few steps. We'll get back to this technique at the end of the lesson. The explanation of overshadowing in terms of learning speed was one of the earliest successes of our W. Another one was its explanation of blocking. In our lesson on blocking, we saw that this finding is the fact that previous learning with the stimulus can block learning to another stimulus. The first line of the table here shows the basic experimental design for blocking, where training with A and B together is preceded by training with A alone. This results in little or no learning about B compared to a control group that is not pre-trained with A. The control group is in the second line of the table. The explanation that RW gives for blocking is that in phase one A, it's up, so to speak, the error, and when B is introduced, there is little or no error left, and so little or no learning. This graph shows a situation where lambda is 100 as before, and both alpha A and alpha B equal 0.1. So in this case, no stimulus has a learning rate advantage. For the first 15 trials, there is only A and no B. So we see that VA grows, but VB stays put at zero. Starting at trial 15, B is added. At this point, however, VA is already 80, so that the error left is only 20. We can see that after trial 15, there is as much learning about B as about A, so there is no learning disadvantage intrinsic to B. But because the error is only 20 at this point, B ends up with an associative strength of only 10, while A ends up with an associative strength of 90. So at the end of the experiment, the animal is predicted to respond strongly to A, but not to B. In summary, RW attributes the blocking effect to the fact that when B is introduced, 
there is little error left to correct, and so little learning goes on from that point on. Similarly to overshadowing, we can derive this conclusion without doing any fancy math, simply reasoning about the logic of the RW model. Let's move on to the final example in this lesson, which is conditioned inhibition. We saw in our lesson on conditioned inhibition that an animal can learn that a stimulus is correlated with something not happening rather than with something happening. As a result, that stimulus will inhibit responding rather than excite it. RW explains condition inhibition in terms of negative associative strength. Let's see how this works. The training phase of a simple condition inhibition experiment has a reward representation of A and unreward representation of A and B together, as indicated in the table. Note that the two lines for A plus and AB minus do not indicate two different groups of animals, but they indicate that two different kinds of experiences are given to the same animals. This graph shows the associative strength of A in red and of A and B together in green during a computer simulation of a conditioned inhibition experiment using the rescore wagner model. The first thing we need to understand is why these lines are jagged going up and down while the lines that we saw in the previous examples were smooth and went only up. The reason is that the previous examples involved the blocks of trials with just one stimulus or just one combination of stimuli. So in overshadowing, we had experiences with A and B together, and in blocking, first with A only, and then with A and B only. This means that all changes in associative strength went in the same direction. In condition inhibition, on the other hand, we are mixing rewarded experiences with A and unrewarded experiences with B. At each trial, the computer flips a coin and decides whether to present A rewarded or B unrewarded. This mimics what is done in real experiments. Now I have added green and red bars to show the exact sequence of experiences used by the computer. Red means a rewarded presentation of A, and green an unrewarded presentation of A and B. On the reinforced trials, VA goes up, while on the unreinforced trials, both VA and VB go down. Because the two types of trials are mixed, we see that the lines go up and down. But we also see that over time the two lines separate, and at the end RW learns to respond to A and not to respond to B. We expect this because, as I mentioned earlier, RW learns to correct all errors, and we are asking it to respond to A and not to respond to A and B together. In this case, the progressive separation of the two lines happens because VAB goes down on AB trials more than it goes up on A trials because A-B trials decrease two associative strength, VA and VB, while A trials only increase VA. So overall, AB is dragged more down than up, and A more up than down. We can also look at what is happening to B. In fact, the reason why VAB goes to zero is that VB becomes negative, as we can see in this updated graph. B receives only negative updates because it is only presented on unrewarded trials. And we can see, in fact, that the curve for B is either flat when there is an A trial that does not involve B, or goes down, and this is when we have an AB trial. It never goes up, because there are no reinforced trials where B is present. Eventually, VB becomes as negative as VA becomes positive. And because associative strength is sum, this means that VAB becomes zero. I want to conclude highlighting that we can reason about practically all learning situations following the same simple rules. We have already seen all of them, but I want to summarize them once again and have them all on a slide for your reference. The first rule is the sum rule. That is, the idea that presenting stimuli together means summing their associative strength. The second rule is the error rule, the idea that learning goes on until all errors are corrected. So if there is an error, there will be learning, and if there is no error, there will be no learning. The third rule is that when stimuli are presented together, the amount of learning about each stimulus is proportional to the alpha value for that stimulus. So a stimulus with a large alpha can overshadow stimuli with a smaller alpha. Using these three rules, one can figure out what the Roscola Wagner model predicts an animal will learn eventually in practically any situation as we have seen in the example above about overshadowing, blocking, and conditioned inhibition.
This lesson concludes our block of three lessons on the basics of the Roscone Wagner model. We have seen that the model successfully mimics animal learning in a number of interesting situations. There is more to our lab than I have covered in these lessons, but this is all I will say for now. I want to mention just that the model is not always right. Sometimes it predicts that animals will learn something different than what they actually seem to learn. So it's always good to remember that RW is a useful theory, but it's not the perfect representation of how animals learn. This lesson is over. Good lessons to watch next are those on animal decision making and on how animals learn actions, which introduces a model of instrumental conditioning that is very similar to RW. Happy learning to everyone.